Hello, I'm back from a three week vacation. I'm excited to be back making content, especially when it's a topic like today's. This week, Meta showed off what those tens of billions of dollars invested in the VR industry have been spent on and it got me pumped. So I wanted to share it. Essentially, Meta aims to make virtual reality so real that you won't be able to tell the difference between VR and real life. They showed how far they are achieving this by showing their headset prototype in action. So okay, VR headsets are already capable of making us feel like we're in a different world, right? But currently there are limitations in things like resolution, field of view, or the headset's weight. And those things take you out of the immersion. So these are challenges that Meta is trying to overcome. In this video, I'll summarize this in four massive features coming to future VR headsets that I think is going to change everything. I'm Kes, and this is your channel for free VR content. Our ask in return is to like and subscribe. Really, it helps tremendously. And now join me beyond reality. Number four. Meet Butterscotch. It has a near retinal resolution of 60 pixels per degree, which means you get 2020 vision. So this means you can read text very clearly, even while 20 feet away in VR. It kind of matches the human eye. This is made possible with a state-of-the-art display panel that's extremely pixel dense and a new custom-designed lens. However, the headset compromises in field of view by reducing it to half the size of the Quest 2. And that's only because this place currently in the market cannot handle so many pixels just yet in such a wide field of view. Meta didn't say this specifically, but it does seem like they were able to achieve this high res on the entire field of view. There are already headsets out there with retina resolution like Vario's very expensive enterprise headset, but the retina resolution is only possible in a small field of view in the center. So it's cool to see how far Meta has come with this research. Unfortunately, Butterscotch isn't ready for production, it's only to demonstrate and research the feeling of retina resolution. What wouldn't be unfortunate is if you left me a like on this video as a thank you, here's a random photo of my cat. On number three is the next feature to look out for, which is very focal designs. And that means focusing with your eyes, just like you would in real life. For example, when you're focusing on an object close to you, that thing becomes clear right but everything around it is blurry if you shift that focus to something in the distance everything close by is blurry but that object you're looking at is detailed this isn't currently possible in consumer headsets because the display is at a fixed distance and it cannot focus on close objects as well as your eyes can if you still try to focus on something close it may look blurry and can cause eye strain so to address this meta developed a series of prototypes now you you may have heard of this one already, they are named Half Dome. They tried many different very vocal designs, like Half Dome 1 had a mechanically moving display to adjust focus, but in the end with Half Dome 3, they removed all mechanical and replaced it with an electronic focusing system. It uses an optical stack, so a stack of lens layers that can be activated individually by applying a voltage. You can even activate different lens layer combinations to get a wide range of focusing distances. For example, if you have six layers, you can get 64 possibilities. Mark Zuckerberg mentioned very vocal technology could come in the next five to six years. Although he said, don't hold him to that exactly. On number two comes Starburst, a very appropriate name as this carries a display that is super uber bright. It can reach an incredible 20,000 nits. A standard monitor commonly has 200 nits. TVs don't usually go much further than 1500 nits and VR displays currently don't even have a thousand nits. So yeah, just to let you know how bright 20k is. The real world has very bright things too. It's much higher in nits than displays as well. So for example, if you look around, you can probably see the sunlight reflecting on a window or maybe the lamp on your desk or even just the fire on a candle. These things are also very high in nits. Brightness is what makes life live unless you're a vampire. The goal of HDR on Starburst is to replicate that real luminance. Norm from Tested actually had a chance to try out this prototype and he was looking at a static photo and found that just having this extra luminance and not Nothing else actually created 
depth. Zuckerberg said this is arguably the most important feature to get VR indistinguishable from reality and that not many people think that having more brightness can actually be more convincing than for example having a higher resolution. It's interesting because I didn't give brightness that much thought either. Am I the only one? Let me know below. Now a display with 20k nits or even 10k is still quite far out and realistically won't ship in the next few MetaQuest headsets, but Sony's PSVR 2 is expected to be the first consumer headset with HDR support. However, they never told us how many nits it will hit. It will probably not be 10k, but still, I'm more excited about HDR now. Number one, to make VR indistinguishable from real life, it's not just visual comfort we need to think about, but the headset should also be very light on the face. That's why Meta is also working on shrinking the size and weight of VR headsets. This is the Holo Cake 2, which looks like comfortable ski goggles, and that's made possible by a combination of holographic lenses and pancake optics. Holo. Cake. This is a very thin lens basically made of holographic films that use a hologram of a regular lens, gaining the ability to work just like a normal lens, except it's much lighter and makes for better form factors. Holo Cake 2 is still a prototype, but this is a working headset. You can connect it to a PC and actually play VR games. That's also the trade-off though, it's not standalone. Plus, Meta says Holocake 2 requires a laser light source and uh, lasers aren't yet available at the performance size and price needed for consumer products. That's why it's not shipping yet in the next couple of generations. Still, Meta also said that this is just their first attempt at a fully functional headset that leverages holographic optics. Meta believes that further shrinking the headset size is possible and that this type of headset could come a little later in the decade. Okay, so you may have noticed that these features are being tested separately, but how epic would it be if this all came together in one VR headset? That's the eventual goal of Matt. The Reality Labs Research Division uses the term visual Turing test to evaluate whether what's displayed in a VR headset can be distinguished from the real world, a test that no VR technology can pass today. But Meta thinks we might just get there with all these features combined and it sounds like they are aiming for it to come in less than 10 years. So these prototypes gives us a good sense of what VR will be like in the future and I don't think it's that far away. It's a pretty good deal, less than 10 years. I mean, I think I'm still alive when that happens and I think that's super exciting. Is anything of this going to be in the next MetaQuest headset? Well, it's clear we're not that far yet and we don't know which feature Meta will prioritize releasing, but Time will tell. What feature do you think is the most essential to make VR as real as real life? Let me know in the comments below. For me, that's number one, of course, comfort. But after researching about HDR, that also sounds like it's gonna make a huge difference. Now, if you want to go more in depth and hear about more future features, Tested actually went to the research lab and got a hands on. It's a one hour long video, but I enjoyed it a lot. So I'll link it below. Again, a big thanks to Norman for letting me use their footage and for teaching me so much. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you for still being here. I will not be here without you all. And a special thanks to our champions. And as always, see you in the matrix.